Well, hi. So we're live. This is Christopher. Hey, everybody. <laughs> so I saw Christopher's um, message on a, a web, a, a Facebook page, and I thought, God, I got to talk to this guy. And then we started connecting, and um, I think you have some valuable information for our community. And kind of tell them um, a little bit about you and your okay. your history a little bit. Okay. Well, um, I'm 41 years old and I'm a recovering drug addict. Um, I'm gainfully employed. I have two jobs actually. Um, uh, have a master's degree now. I'm working on a doctorate. And in? In biological anthropology. Why? Uh, because I, I like humans and I like human variation and I like all the, the differences that we have and, and I see them as assets. So you spent five years of your life homeless and living on the streets Correct. as an addict. Correct. So yes, I had a um, not the greatest childhood and I had no coping skills, had some pretty serious unresolved grief and loss issues. My grandfather who helped raise me because my father wasn't there, he passed when I was five unexpectedly and then my dad who was in and out of my life. He was a great guy. He was a Vietnam veteran and um, he was a highly decorated army ranger but he had the troublesome Vietnam veteran, unsupported veteran story, and, and he passed from a heroin overdose in 1987 when I was nine years old. And so um, I, I didn't really know what to do with that. We didn't talk about it, so family basically thought that it wasn't an issue or that I had overcome it or whatever, and um, I, hadn't, I didn't understand how unresolved grief and loss was affecting me. And um, I got into drugs, and um, that led me down a bad path, didn't work out, which resulted in homelessness, chronic homelessness, and then uh, for the longest period, about five years that I spent outside. Yes, I want to really quickly thank our sponsor, Bucks uh, Sanitary Service. This is the Buck Stops here, and the reason we do this is because Scott and, and his wife, Lisa, they just say, go get stories like this to share with people. So because of them, we can do this. Now, th what, what caught my eye on this whole thing is because you were saying in this Facebook page that you feel like Eugene is enabling um, this kind of activity. We're, we're, are, we're getting people, you explain, okay? Because okay. I don't want to put words in your okay. mouth. Um, well, <clears throat> I'll just say, I'll, I'll start with when I see a homeless individual or I see an addict, um, I still see the human in them and I, and I see that they're suffering. And I know that trauma is the gateway drug and that none of these people had an easy route in life. Right. Um, and if we can use the analogy of, of a teenager who won't leave their room, um, this is how I see it. If, if I wasn't to leave my room and I was to sit around and, and get high in my room, make a mess, uh, be loud, be threatening, um, not have a job, not contribute to my household, my mother would never put up with that. Right? She would definitely not bring me food, not bring me Hot Pockets and PB&Js. Right? She would have me leave, or, and, and she would probably ask me if I needed some help, if I needed to go to treatment. Um, what you know something and um, what I see the community doing here is is hurting people through the idea that they're helping so um, people sitting around um, getting high I see it on my way to work all day long passing through um, from where I drop my kids off to, to where I work in the Whitaker um, just homeless camps uh, trash strewn about everywhere people getting high right there my kids seeing it from the window and people bringing those folks sandwiches so we're enabling this problem as a community when we're in the name of kindness we we're, we're thinking it's kind but uh, somebody brought this up to me one time too and said is it kind to allow people to suffer on the streets of eugene and see and I, that's what that's what i have a problem with i think we're not and we're attracting them because you see you yes. were homeless and you were you tell me that story yeah so yeah i fully agree too I, it's attracting it and and it's encouraging it and um the, the strategy that I like to employ is, is a hand up, not a handout, right? If somebody's suffering, I'm absolutely going to lend my hand if they want it and help them up out of their situation, but I'm not going to encourage it to prolong. Um, yeah, I, I, was, I was homeless and um, I was continuously blaming everyone for my problems, blaming the government, blaming the police, uh, blaming my past, uh, blaming the city I lived in, but just blaming. And so I, I went and, and attempted to geographically relocate my problems away. And in turn, um, I never did find that, that great place where my problems didn't uh, they show followed up with you. me. Yeah, they came with me. <laughs> and so um, I did happen to love Oregon and I'd passed through here quite a bit and I always dreamed about living here. 
But also it was attractive because <clears throat> I could pretty much do what I wanted here. I could get high. I could sleep under a bridge. I could kind of like sleep wherever. Um, you know, I passed through. I was just a homeless guy with a cardboard sign and a dog. That's who I used to be. And, um, you know, they gave me a food stamp card that lasted for six months until I had to re-up it. And, um, you know, I'd just, I'd spend that out of state. <clears throat> I'd come back periodically and get it get it re-upped or you know um, re-sign up for those benefits and um, and and just basically not contribute yeah but it was it was a really easy place to be homeless so, and I, heard so I was homeless in 48 states and just missing Hawaii and Alaska and and I just found it to be kind of conducive to the lifestyle so I had a, a gentleman on the street tell me one time he goes Rick <clears throat> Eugene specifically but Oregon is like Club Med for the homeless population. We're, we're attracted here because we can get anything we need. We can, we, we don't have to do anything. Right. I mean, without, without the ease of, 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 um, all the handouts, it's not the most ideal place to be homeless. Right. I mean, it rains quite a bit here. I'd rather be in, say in Bend where it's not going to rain all winter long. Um, even if it's cold, it's just easier not in the rain. But, so yeah. what do we do? I mean, if you were sitting down with the city council and could talk to people, because um, I've gone on on the street and asked these folks, and and they and and they're very they're very open, you know, and they'll tell mm -hmm. me, no, I'm I'm I don't have any commitment to your town, I don't, you know, and and I, I what, what would you tell you what would you say what do we tell what would you say to the city council about this because you also are in the business of counseling people who are addicts and in, in, in recovery. Um, a lot of them who were probably out on the streets and you yes. know who's going to make it, who's not going to make it but are we trading something in our community for it feels like, I think to a lot of people it feels like they've taken over yeah absolutely it feels that way and um, so I, I think putting putting all hands on deck into into the repair process but not the enabling process right? So what would that so, be? Uh, Give me an idea just from so, you I'm just looking for your idea so yeah easier access to treatment drug treatment or mental health but if people don't want it there you we can't force anybody into that right so if <clears throat> if people don't want it we we can't allow we can't allow it to keep going on I mean when I drove to work this morning I saw a camp that was probably bigger than than the place that I live in right that was one person's camp and it was trash everywhere now yes that person needs the place to stay but if I can't build a house right there on that sidewalk right um, I don't see any difference. So is that enforcing rules and, and laws? Because um, that's what I hear from a lot of people. The rules need to apply to everybody. Right, because if I went downtown and 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 went to the bathroom in the middle of public, they, yes. I would probably yeah. be arrested. Yes. Um, but yeah. we're allowing that to happen, and that and, and that doesn't make sense to me. Right. We can't we can't just um, prescribe lawlessness for for uh, people just because they they don't seem to have a place to live or. Um, or that they're on drugs. So if you start enforcing some of that, do you think some of the trouble people will leave? So, you know what I mean? It's not like we're trying to chase people out, but saying we have a standard in our community. And I'm asking you. Right. We have a standard in our community. If you don't live up to it, we're going to make it so that you are going to live up to that thing or you, you make other choices. I don't know. That's what I'm asking you. Right, yeah. So if, I, I mean, I believe that if, when I was in active addiction, if I was having people bring me sandwiches and burritos all day long, like they do downtown, um, and I had a food stamp card that I could sell to my dealer, and cheap, easy access to drugs and needles, um, with no intervention, I'm, there's not any likelihood that that person's going to stop their active addiction just one day and just stop. Right? There, there needs to be some kind of break in the cycle. Let me ask you this, just because it's a it's a topic, and you if if I ask you anything that makes you uncomfortable, because sure. I don't think I could probably, because you're a pretty comfortable, dude. But you know, what about jail bets? Um, a lot of people have been talking about if we had a way to enforce those laws to put somebody in jail. Not that that's the ultimate answer, right. but does that get people's aware? Does it shake people up? Would it have done anything for you? Yeah, I mean, I I definitely didn't respect what was going on at the time, but but when I had those types of interventions, it, it definitely. Um, slowed my role a little bit and I, I, I don't believe in um, law enforcement having to act as mental health providers nor as um, addiction counselors however I know their hands are tied as well if someone commits a violent crime in our in our community yeah they're let go pretty fast it's it's unbelievable um, so 
I think that having people go back out onto the streets after committing violent crimes, our city council needs to look at that. Right. So if you were sitting before them, would you say you need to take a different approach to this? Yeah, absolutely. And and what I believe is going to happen, too, I mean, the longer this goes on, um, if, if rules aren't enforced and, and this continues to grow, we're, we're going to see vigilantism. And that's terrible. Cause I, and I've had people, Eugene Weekly, others accuse me of, oh, you're, supo- you're sponsoring this. This is the other thing I wanted to ask yeah. you, Christopher. What really bugs me personally is we can't even talk about this. I have people on Facebook, you can't even make a comment about this without some people in the advocate community um, turning you into the bat. You hate homely. You hate right, this. No. It's really easy to belittle people when we're saying, wait, I, I have questions. No. And then I find a guy like you who is an expert at this because you were it. Right. And now you're actually doing something positive by helping people like yourself get out of the lifestyle, and it's not by leaving them sit on the street doing drugs. Right. right. Yeah. I, I mean, I want to see. I want to see these people become whole again. Me right? too. I want to see healthy, like you, healthy people. Right. I don't want my kids to have to worry that you know that's going to be them someday. Right. And this is, this is not normal life. And you have three kids, and Correct. you're doing well. Right. Yeah. What was the secret for you? I mean, not a secret, but what was the click? What what went on that that didn't go? That you know what I mean? What was that switch? That made me change. Yeah, man. Uh, things were progressing terribly in my addiction. <laughs> you were going downhill. And um, yes, and I happened to have a, a beautiful divine intervention of an old friend who's not from this area, who. Um, I had lost contact with because she didn't talk to users anymore and she was clean and she was going to the university and the last time we had run into each other was in on the east coast in portland maine and i was doing terrible she was doing great and she offered to take me to a meeting a 12-step meeting and um i i didn't know that i was going to stop using then i was kind of in between addictions so uh withdrawals were uh, not something i was dealing with at the time uh but um, I started going to some meetings. I started getting the help that I needed uh, through the encouragement of somebody who who cared and and took me in, and um, that changed things for me. And I found a circle of people who who were giving me a hand up. You know, they none of them were feeding me. None of them were, um, you know, taking care of me uh, without my own personal accountability there. But they were gu- guiding me towards the help that I needed, and so I I got the help that I needed from some community support. So there's a ton of hope. Yeah, yeah, and they taught me how to be fully self-supporting in all my affairs and and um, not rely on so on it from others. So what I love what you're saying. So it takes it takes almost as this. I, I hate this phrase, but tough love, um, where I'm really committed to helping you. Yeah. But I'm not babying you or coddling you. It's like because you have to make the decision to change. I can't make you change and you can't make me change. When you're counseling the different people you're working with, you can't make them change. But when you care about them and give them real information, the possibility is there. Right. I mean, uh, so now, I mean, I have motivational interviewing techniques and things like that that will help maybe spark some motivation in somebody who's lacking the willingness. However, without the willingness, nobody's going to change. Right. You have to get the hope somewhere, and then you have to have the willingness. But you're saying you're not going to find it by just leaving Eugene doing what it's doing right now. It's not no. going to – it's just going to get worse. Right. Absolutely. So why did you come – why are you so open about this? Because you could get uh, – I mean, I genuinely have a positive concern for humanity, and I want to see people and their suffering, and I, I don't know that – I know, I know for a fact that enabling is not going to end any of the suffering. And I know that it's all rooted in good. Um, right. That's what the... It, and I'd like... To, I, I want to coin the phrase here. I call it runaway virtue signaling. Do it, Say it again. Say it again. Runaway virtue signaling. So if I want to give somebody um, a sandwich or, uh, or some food, um, we'll see people of good virtue start to want to, out of ego, uh, out-compete one another. Well, you want to give them... Uh, food. Uh, well, I want to give them food and housing. Right. Okay. Well, I want to give them food, housing, and free education. And it's like, whoa, whoa. We need to give them skills. Right. right? Give so them the true tilt. Tracy's true on here. Who is this guy? I love everything he's sharing. Can he teach us how to give a hand up? I'm in. Why don't we have? Why don't we have you? And people like you. Why aren't you training people? Here's my idea. Mm-hmm. You're training people like me and uh, Tracy and others who want to get involved in that. 
and and we're getting people like really doing stuff. You know what I mean? Because right now it feels like they have to come to you at the place where you work. Mm-hmm. It's a, and and I'll tell you, I'm not going to say where he works because that's a secret thing. Um, but he works for an agency that I have met several people in my life, and one of them's on here right now. I just saw you, Matt, who've been treated there, and don't say where it is, Matt. And they have re- they have found their way, and they're finding their way, and so some real great things are happening there. So I want to get you out there educating us on what to do. That makes you smile. Sure, yeah. You got you you would be such an asset to this town. You need to go stand before the city council and talk with them. City council, you need to be listening. This is the guy who knows what we're talking about and a whole bunch of other people like him who are coming on here going, I totally relate to you and these are people that have been through mm-hmm. exactly what you've been right. through. Right. And to me, uh, it's service work is is what it all comes down to, service to humanity. Right? And in order for it's not only for myself to repair the lifestyle that I was living and the harm that I'd done in my life, but just as, as a genuine concern for humanity. And Muhammad Ali said the quote, uh, service to others is the rent you pay for your place here on earth. And uh, I live by that. To, to, to give back to others, to be a living amends. We need to help people out. Do you feel, because I have other friends who've been in recovery and addiction and homelessness, and some of the things they did were pretty pretty nasty. Um, they do this kind of stuff. One of them has a chef recovery sober group awesome. because they want to make up for what they did. Is that part of what you do? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, there's, you know, I've apologized to my mom for all the sleepless nights and um, care and concern that she had for me, but, but nothing's going to undo that. I have to be a living amends, right? I can't just say I'm sorry. I have to I have to continuously do better and help others and help other people um, remedy those problems that they have in their family and and perform their living amends. I, I like the way you say that, the living amends, because I think that in some cultures, you know, we have sorry to me sometimes is a word that is, oh, sorry, means and nothing. it means nothing. It means now, because the real word of it, and I'm not trying to be religious on anybody, but it's repentance. It's really turning it around. It's amending. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're amending, I'm going to go in and I'm going to turn it completely around, and it's not, hey, sorry, hurt your feelings, sorry, did this. Right. I can't even, I'd hate the word now. Yeah, sure. And to me, to me, an amends is, it's, it's the apology, but it's also, for example, if I was loaded and I kicked down your fence, I can't just say, hey, sorry, Rick. Right. And leave it at that. Right. I have to mend the fence. Right. And then come to you and say, how else did I harm you? Right. And then so part of that is also living my program, letting people know I'm not going to make these mistakes again, hopefully, and I'm going to help others. When um, people sit in your office and you look into their eyes, what do you see? And I see people who've suffered, and, and I see some of the strongest people uh, that the world has ever known. They just have no idea of their strength. I mean, people who've survived um, some of the most horrific acts and terrible family circumstances, and uh, I see potential. I see people like um, some of the beautiful old houses around town that are neglected, moss on the roof, kind of dilapidated, and I'm like, man, we're going to remodel this, and it's going to be, it's going to be beautiful. I really like you, man. You're awesome. Thanks. You're like a super cool dude. I like. I just love your heart and how you. I mean, you really do give a shit. Yeah. 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 And I'm glad because I do, despite what people want to think. Um, you know, I care a lot about this whole topic, and I think there's a lot of people who are we're just letting them waste away, and that's no way to live. And, I, and here's the thing for me: I've met too many Matts, I've met too many Harrisons, I've met too many Christophers who are inside there and they do come out if and and I met a girl the other day so I met her at um, Dairy Mart I'm going to do a story on her next mm-hmm. month she was in the and I did an interview with her at St. Vincent de Paul she has now turned her complete life around she goes Rick I found two people that gave me hope and she goes and I kept going and going and she says the same thing with you she mm-hmm. goes people can't expect it just to turn around or people society to make it better for them you have to find that thing and go out and do it and she's turned her whole life around right Beautiful. Is there anything else you want to say before I shut this down? I, I think it's important to look at where we think we're doing good, are we actually doing harm, right? Are we trying to be right or are we trying to be effective? Right? And a lot of us think that, right, yes, people need to eat and you're all right, but are you being effective? And that's more important to answer. That's good information. All right, Christopher? 
Thanks, man. No, yeah. I am so glad. I'm so glad to meet you. Yeah, and I'm glad you made it out. Yeah and that you're helping people in my community and that you're raising three boys mm -hmm. um, that are gonna be future members of, of the community that I live in because I know they're, they're getting the same thing from you. You know, would your mom ever believe in a million years that you're this guy? Oh man, she's, you know, <laughs> she's definitely proud of where I'm at now. <laughs> I, be, I bet she is. It took a long is. time to, to have her not worry. You yeah. Know? And, yeah. I think she always knew this is where I was supposed to be. I was the one who didn't know, you know? Yeah. So, you guys, um, again, we want to thank uh, Buck Sanitary Service. The buck stops here. Um, Scott always lets me do the best things, and this was uh, sponsored by him. So, um, you know, it's not like you're going to pick the porta potty you go to, but you know what? <laughs> if you got to have a, if you're having a party and you're going to do something, pick, pick bucks, okay? Yeah, all right, you guys, if you missed this, hey, Bill, how are you? If you guys missed this, go back and watch this. Share this on your page so other people can see it. If you're on one of the city councilors' page, share it with the city council. Let them see this. And let's see more of this kind of stuff going on, more mental health counseling in our community um, and less enabling. And that takes – doesn't that take really big balls to do that, to not enable? Yeah, I mean, it's harder yeah. than enabling. Setting, setting a firm boundary with somebody, especially when you care about them, is, is a lot tougher – than just giving them what they want. It always is. Boundaries are never fun. You know that when you're a parent. Yeah, absolutely. Same, yeah. same principle. All right. Yeah, awesome stuff, huh? All right, thanks, you guys. Christopher, this is not the end for you and me, man. <laughs> okay, all right, we'll talk to you guys later. Have a good day. See you, man.